heal 10 lepers. One turned back, praised God, fell at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And Jesus wondered where the other nine were. Why only one, a foreigner no less, why only one who came back and said thank you? Now, when I hear this story, I think the same thing, and you may too. Why only one? Where are the nine? How ungrateful can they be just going their way and not even acknowledging the wonderful gift that Jesus has given them? They had been living a terrible existence, outcast, not allowed to, to associate or live among their family and friends and community because of their disease. And when anyone approached them along the road, they had to call out, unclean, unclean, so that person would stay far enough away. But now, they were free to go back to their family, their community, their synagogue, free to be whole, persons again. How could they not even say thank you to Jesus after what they had received from him? Unheard of. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard this story enough times over the years, especially this time of the year, and perhaps you have too, and perhaps together we have concluded that this story means we ought to cultivate what has been known, come to known as an attitude of gratitude by focusing on the one who came back to say thank you and by dismissing the other's ungrateful slobs, being a little bit self-righteous and associating with the one who came back. Except that's not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't really dismiss those nine others. Did you hear what he said? He, he wondered about them. He asked, where are the nine? Now Jesus is good at asking questions. Questions that lead seekers like you and like me down pathways that we might not have considered before. Where are the nine? Martin Bell, an Episcopal priest and author, pondered that question of Jesus and, and wrote a very creative response that has sparked my imagination since I first heard it as a youth. And so with his help, let's ponder again that question, where are the nine? Let's listen to the stories of the nine. And as we do, let's ask ourselves, where am I among the nine? It's simple. I was frightened. I was scared. I mean, this Jesus had the power to cleanse me. This Jesus had the power, and I felt the power entering me as I saw the, the, my dead skin falling off of me, going back to the priest, and I was scared I'd never experienced such power. And if Jesus can do this to me, what would happen? He could also, if I went back and he did something else to me, destroyed me, I don't know if I want to be any nearer to Jesus than I have to be. I can't go back and give thanks. I'm afraid. Well, Jesus offended me. After all, I was raised with this notion that you get what you pay for, and what you pay for, and, and, and if you pay enough for it, it must be worth something, and here I had done nothing to buy my health. I had done nothing. I didn't have to pay penance. I didn't have to go wash myself. I didn't have to go fast. Here this Jesus is just giving me this healing and health. It must be suspect. It's, I don't, I'm offended by what he's done when I didn't even do anything to earn that reward.
I realized too late that I really didn't want to be healed. Oh, I thought I did, and I called out, but, but when I was healed, I, I hadn't realized how much my disease had formed who I was and shaped my identity, how I acted, my place in my community of lepers. And now that, that I'm healed, I don't know who I am without this disease. I don't have an identity. Jesus took that away. This is a tough one for me to explain because you see it, it treads on, on holy ground. You see, when I was healed, I became deliriously happy, ecstatic, excited. I was so overcome with joy and happiness that I just, all I could live with is happy joy. And, and to be honest, I hate to admit it, I forgot. I forgot. I was so overcome with joy at my new self. I haven't been able to say thank you for years. You see, when I first had this disease, I, I, I thought that if, if I sat on a particular spot in the market and begged nicely for some help and then said thank you profusely, people would appreciate it and they would, they would say, oh, that's a nice, polite beggar there. We'll give him some money. But over the years, I began to notice that it was just a game. And people would throw money at me as they scoffed. Or they would ignore me and call me names. And I didn't want to play that thank you, sir, game anymore. So I just stopped saying it. And I haven't said it since. Nor will I again. I suppose. I've been away from my family for 11 years. 11 years. During that time, I have missed seeing my children grow from childhood into young adulthood. I've missed teaching them and admonishing them. I've missed, I've missed the celebrations that they've had as they've come of age. I've missed holding them. And so I felt like I've been in prison all these years, like a, like a caged animal, a wild caged animal who, who when the, the cage is finally open, rushes out, runs straight toward home without looking back, afraid to look inside, afraid to be captured again. I had to run home. My first priority was my family. I didn't want to waste one more minute with them. I was freed, and that's what mattered. You know, I was healed, all right. But I didn't believe it was Jesus who healed me. There was a perfectly good explanation for my healing. I just don't know what it is, but it's, there's some reason, some rational, intelligible reason, and someday somebody will know and find out why I was healed. You see, I don't believe in hocus pocus or, or magic or, or miracles. That's just not who I am. I didn't say thank you to Jesus because he really had nothing to do with my healing. Oh, Jesus had everything to do with my healing. When I was healed, my eyes were opened and I knew who Jesus was. He was the Messiah. In him, God's kingdom was coming on earth. The whole world was going to change and all I had to do, my total focus in life, was to go and proclaim the good news of God's kingdom. Tell people, open your eyes, see God's presence, see Christ here and Messiah has come. That's my job. That's what I had to do, compelled to that to do and nothing else.
You know, I don't have an answer about why I didn't turn around and say thank you to Jesus. I just don't know. Only God knows the mysteries of human of the human psyche. That's all I can tell you. I don't know. So you heard their stories. Where are the nine? Now we know. But the question is, where are you among the nine? You see, and we know this with our heads, God gives wondrous gifts to each of us. It may not be the radical overnight healing, instantaneous healing that the lepers received, but the things we received are no less valuable, no less miraculous, no more deserved. We live in this rich land, surrounded by priceless resources, amazing beauty. Most of us lead comfortable lives with plenty to eat and a warm place to sleep. Most of us share our lives with people who, who manage to love us in spite of our faults. The, the list goes on and on, and around this time of year, we begin to make our own list and practice them, what priceless gifts we have received. So where are we among the nine? Where are you among the nine who simply went on with their lives after receiving the gift of healing? They were healed, just like the tenth one. They went on with their lives, just like Jesus told them to do. Where are you among those nine? Maybe you too are afraid or in a hurry or not sure of what you believe, or, or too sure of what you believe. Maybe you too are tired of saying thank you, or most likely maybe you just plain forget. Or only God knows why you do, or you don't do. Like it or not, you and I, we're among the nine. And, like the original nine, Jesus continues to wonder, to ask questions about us, to call after us, not so he can reprimand us for, for our bad behavior or force us to say thank you, but so he can offer himself to us again, fully. No strings attached, again and again and again. So Jesus asks about us, where are you, he asks. And then he asks, and, say, and then he says, wherever you are, leading your lives, come back. Come back to me. Come back to me, you who are lost or resentful or doubting. Come back to me, you who are afraid or suffering or offended. Come back to me, you who are joyful, believing, living. Come back to me, all of you, because there is so much more to life than what you are experiencing right now. So come back and come back and stay with me. Stay by my side through all the ups and downs of life, and I promise to stay by your side too. I will continue to care for you and to seek you out and to ask about you and to show you God's way, God's power, God's grace, God's comfort, God's rest, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's love. Stay with me, I'll stay with you and I'll show you the way. Wherever you are, come. And I'll show you by my life how fully God loves even 
someone like you. And for that, we can all proclaim from the depths of our being, thanks be to God. Amen.